Hey there friends and welcome back to the channel. My name is Andy and um, there's a new massive uh, Imperator Rome update out called Marius 2.0 or at least version 2.0. Um, it's been a really long time since I played Imperator um, and um, I thought we could um, yeah, try to learn this thing together. I haven't played this game since it came out actually um, and uh, for those sort of first few weeks. And I have forgotten uh, basically everything, but hopefully that won't really matter because there might be a lot of new stuff in this game. Um, and if you're looking up this video, then you know probably you know what this uh, game is about. It's a paradox grand strategy game set in the ancient uh, era, um, and you can basically play as um, yeah any faction on this map, which is uh, which is uh, pretty cool. But, we want to play as, I believe, Rome, because um, I find them to be very cool. Um, maybe, maybe if you're like an absolute uh, beginner, then Crete would be something to consider. I know there's a ton of uh, tutorial videos on Crete. Um, but we won't be doing that here. Um, we will be testing out Rome. We might fail horribly, but I hope that uh, you guys can help me in the chat if, if you think I'm doing something stupid. Um, and I do believe we want to play Iron Man mode um, so that we can get achievements if we manage to do anything cool. Um, and I don't want to cheese the game either, so that way we can't load. Um, yeah, so um, let's begin with Rome. Okay, for over 20 years, the, the nascent Roman Republic has fought a harsh campaign against the Samnite people to the south. Although victory often seemed far from grasp, the war ended in Rome's favor, resulting in the liberation of the important Greek city of Neapolis. The Samnites, however, having retreated to lick their wounds, are far from defeated. In the north, the Etruscan people eye the expansion of the Republic with apprehension. To the south, myriad Greek city-states plot behind one another's backs, all the while appealing to their benefactors in Greece for aid. On the far-flung island of Sicily, the foreign invasion of the mysterious Carthaginian Empire threatens to upset the precarious balance of power in the region. Will Rome rise victorious or fall to, to internal strife and barbaric hordes? The fate of the Republic rests in your hands. For the Republic. Okay, so that is the sort of background story um, of our game, and this is our uh, this is our state, um, Rome. We are the Romans. We are not the masters of um, the continent, as we um, hopefully will be one day. Uh, but we have a long way to go. And I see right away that there's a lot of new stuff, uh, well, there's a ton of new stuff to talk about. Um, so if this goes kind of slow, then, you know, this is a video that, that you want to watch. If it's too slow, then, you know, uh, skip on ahead or uh, watch another video. Um, but yeah, so first of all, the whole UI is remade, which I think is, is, uh, is a really good choice. They had a lot of... Um, UI sites that weren't really fitting the game at all before and it made it hard to see what, what was what. But now, this sort of side UI here, which um, kind of mimics the one in CK3 just on the other side, is um, beautiful and um, just intuitive in uh, comparison. This actually, you know, looks like the military tab, this kind of looks like religion tab and etc. I really like this and every screen has also been remade. There are new character uh, portraits, new icons. Uh, I love the red and I love the sort of uh, Babylonian blue or whatever this uh, color is called. Um, there's also these UI um, uh, icons on the map here. I guess this is a temple. Um, this is a city capital, actually. I think I think these are cities, um, if I re if I remember correctly from the first um, sort of versions of the game. Uh, this, though, I would assume it has something to do with buildings. Um, great Wonder, maybe that's what that is. A Great Wonder. Oh, uh, the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. Okay, and maybe there's wonders elsewhere too. Is there a wonder here, for example? 
Um, no, it doesn't look like it. So, maximum civilization, I don't know. I guess we'll have to just uh, find out. But these are icons of... Uh, these, I mean, are icons of uh, trading ports. Or ports. Uh, so, almost every or a lot of um, coastal uh, cities have them. Um, let's see here. We have some of these tabs up here. Uh, they show us uh, what we can do right now, or sort of um, what our options are. Um, so we can we can um, use trade routes. So in Imperial Rome, trade is extremely important. Um, something which really hasn't been a concept since uh, Victoria II, I believe. Trade was not like. It, of course, trade was a big part of uh, Europa Universalis IV, but not in the same way. You didn't trade individual resources like here. You sort of uh, tried to uh, rule the trade winds and stuff, and the trade nodes. But here, you actually import and export specific, um, specific resources. So here, we have um, 0 out of 6 used trade, imp trade um, imports, or slots, I guess. Um, and uh, using imports and exports, uh, trading basically, is very important for your income. So right now, uh, we only make 0 0.66 uh, from commerce, which is uh, way too little. We only make one per month, one gold per month. So we want to expand that. And based on your resources, you also get a specific... Um, sort of bonuses. So, for example, for salt, how does this work again? Salt here. Um, surplus in the capital. So, if you have a surplus of salt in the capital, which means that you have um, like a plus one of something, then you get this awesome bonus. Um, oh, let's see how this works. There we go. Legion maintenance cost minus 5%, which, uh, you know, becomes more and more important as your army expands. Just having salt by itself uh, gives uh, plus 3% to local monthly food modifier, my modifier, which is important if you want your uh, cities to grow. And the trade value is 0 0.30, so that is added to your treasury total, of course. Um, yes, so let's see here. We, we kind of want surpluses of many of these um, resources here. Cloth, for example, or to tech investment. That's a whole nother thing with technology. I wonder if that's changed at all. Um, technology is here. And um, eight, select a technology, select a technology category to view its in invention tree, okay? This is completely different from um, how it was in the base game. Um, and it seems like... Let's see, can we go from... Um, there we go. Using the middle mouse button to uh, slide over here. Astral navigation, material science, military artisans. So these are kind of massive trees right now. They're not really... Um, as locked behind sort of specific paths as they were before. And they're much more easily uh, viewable now, which uh, which I love. It's it's definitely a great uh, change here. Um, okay, but these cost... These cost... Um, what, what do these cost? They used to cost political influence points. Click to unlock military artisans. Yeah, base cost. Let's see here. One of these... We have any of these? Eight. Yeah, we have eight innovations. I guess they just research them, actually, perhaps. What, what happens if I click this? Click to unlock, armor weight modifier, naval range. Naval range determines, like, diplomatic um, possibilities. So, for example, right now we can't... I don't believe we can, for example, interact with Egypt because they're too far away. Military artisans, Rome gains one free province investment. That's actually quite good. Uh, and military provincial investment cost. Okay, so that's very militaristic. Supply limit plus 10 is good. What happens if I unlock this? 
Uh, adopting military artist sentence will cost one research point or whatever and give the following effect. Rome gains one free province investment and uh, military province provincial investment cost by 10%. Let's see what happens. Okay, great. So we actually now uh, have uh, seven left. So I guess we can start by just unlocking seven investments. And uh, there's a lot to choose from. Okay, so in the civic advances, like, I guess we want to do this right off the bat, actually, because they give us bonuses. Um, import value plus five, standardized measures. The Amphora Capitolina was an Amphora kept in the Temple of Jupiter, by which all other Amphora were intended to be measured. That's a very good one. National citizen output, that's also a good one. So, oh my god, this game is <laughs> actually so, <laughs> there's so much to explain, and, um, I'm not a master at this game even, like I said, I'm kind of a noob now, um, and that's what I want to call myself since I, yeah, I am a total noob. Um, but Imperator is made up of citizens, and um, you see this from the, I guess, the culture tab. Um, we have nine nobles in our country, and eight of them are Hellenic Roman, while one is Hellenic Italia, Italiotian. Italian Ocean. Um, we have 138 citizens, 105 are Roman, 10 are Messapian, 7 are Jewish, uh, and uh, the rest are Hellenic um, types. So, these have a lot to say about how your nation is doing based on their culture and class. Um, because what happens is that certain um, types of people only do certain types of work and they have as you can see here specific values of happiness and keeping them happy makes them more productive so for example um citizens um they lend their their strength to base tax and to local manpower so you get more men from uh, happy citizens uh, and you also gain more base tax for from no sorry from freemen uh, from citizens you gain manpower too but less than from uh, freemen but you get research points and from the nobles you get even more research points but no manpower from the tribesmen very little manpower and little base tax and from the slaves you get base tax uh, And, uh, and that's basically it. Um, so the whole thing is keeping them happy. Which is a challenge once your empire grows. Uh, trust me. I don't know much, but I do know that. Let's get back to this tr trade thing. Let's do one thing at a time. We want to import, and I do believe we want... What do we want? Wood. Um, surplus in the capital. Ship recruitment spree. We don't need ships right now, actually. Or do we? When we want to take uh, Etruria, we might need ships for that. But we're kind of focusing on Italia right now, it it Italia proper. But what we do want is salt, I think. Because salt gives us legion maintenance cost reduction and more food. So salt, if we click on the resource, we can choose where to import it from. And uh, all of these means that we can we can import them. The X obviously means that we cannot import them. And here are the reasons stated as well. So we cannot import it from Cessitania because they would lose their capital bonus. Uh, and because they don't like us very much. But who do we want to import it from? I guess Venetia, they're close. And we are not going to go to war with them uh, very soon. I think that's fine. Venetia. We're now importing salt. And uh, I think that will uh, turn up in our uh, commerce income um, once the month has uh, expired. And we can import five more things. Now we have a good surplus of salt here. Uh, horses. What do horses do? So they... Dude, come on. Why can't I lock this? I can lock this. Why can't I lock and read the horses one? See, it's locked. <laughs> Weird. Okay, uh, I guess maybe I can check it um, here. Troubles in the capital, heavy cavalry discipline. Do we want to use a lot of horses right now? I 
Uh, maybe. They don't make a lot of money, as you can see. It's 0 0.25. It's better if you want to make money to go down here. Precious metal, 0 0.5. That's a lot. Uh, same with marble. Actually, marble is really good. I don't really like tyranny that much. It's tyranny. What does that do again? Um, tyranny can do some good and some bad. Um, the tyranny value represents the level of oppression within the country. There are various actions that can increase this. Uh, so, for example, if you act against other characters, uh, Imperator Rome is a um, sort of shared character and state system, so it's a kind of mix between Crusader Kings and Europa Universalis, but also kind of neither. Um, so it's a weird mix. I uh, it, it was far from perfect, but I wonder if it might have changed after uh, after this uh, year, or is it two years been now? It seems a very long time since it came out. <laughs> um, but okay, honey, I think yeah. Okay, so. Since this is, is a grand strategy game, um, it's all about, you know, uh, leading your nation to victory and to power. And you can do that in two ways, essentially, by waging war and winning those wars, or through diplomacy. Through, you know, uh, making alliances, even diplomatically uh, vassalizing your neighbors and, um, and uh, puppeting them, and then even integrating them into your nation. Uh, which I I think is the coolest option to be to be honest. Um, I love that you can now click up here. By the way, that's a really cool um, addition. I hated that you couldn't click on it since you can always click on the banner in, for example, Hearts of Iron or uh, or uh, EU4 and the CK2 with the character icon. Um, but we see here that, uh, let's see, the diplomacy screen, or is it the government one? I think it's diplomacy. And where's diplomacy? Let's learn where diplomacy is right away. Nation overview? No. Okay, we, we really need to find this. <laughs> Economy, religion, culture, trade overview, military, mercenaries, diplomacy. Here we go. Yeah, of course it's the bird. Which is also the word. Um... What I'm looking for is this. Rome, that's us, we can have one diplomatic relation. That means that... Wait, local power plus one? Yeah, so if we, like... If we stretch over this level of diplomatic uh, relation, we get a um, debuff in, some, in something else. I don't remember quite exactly what right now. Or if it's even possible. Uh... I, I think we actually have to spend political influence if we, uh, if we go over our level, uh, our, our restriction of the diplomatic relations. But we can also choose that based on our stance, uh, which I, I think is a really cool dipl diplomatic feature. So right now we are in a bellicose stance, meaning that we clearly want war. Which means that, like, it helps us when we want to wage war. So, aggressive expansion impact is lessened, claim fabrication, claim fabrication speed is hastened, war score cost is also uh, less than normal, uh, but our neighbors dislike us. Meaning that it's harder to conduct diplomacy with them. Right now, though, um, we are actually uh, the overlord of certain other Italian states. Uh, one of them is Fr Frentania, uh, Pelinia, Nucaria, and Marcia. Uh, so basically, all of these. And if we go to the um, Diplomacy tab, we see here clearly that they are sort of the same color as us. But there, there's also differences between them. <laughs> um, so for example, if we go here to, um, wait, is, is that us? Yeah, this is, okay, this is us, okay. Uh, I didn't know we had land over there, fine, good to know. But, here, in, um, in uh, Polinia, Polinia is a feudatory, and that's one of the, that's perhaps the one that you want the most uh, to have, since I believe they can be, they can be integrated. Yeah, they can be integrated uh, once they like us a certain level, which they do not now. They need we they like us 80, and they need to like us at uh, 190. Um, while 
Let's see. Polinia. No. Um, hold on. What's going on here? Who were our... Um, Feudatory, 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 Feudatory. Okay, all of them are actually Feudatories. So, so these can all be integrated. Uh, but there are other types of subjects as well. So for example... Oh, these are other... These are new uh, diplomatic uh, options. Make friends. Spread this Wait, is this a guy in our realm? So confused. Okay, no, here we go. That, that was just one guy. This is the whole uh, country. Now, align uh, influence actions, for example. Um, demand tribute, uh, tribal vassal status, demand tribute, offer feudatory. And uh, tribute, if we see here, what tributes do you? Why does this only work sometimes? Okay, either way. Um, Rome against tyranny, because whatever. Senate support, we'll talk about that later. Um, a tributary is a loose subject who gives a portion of their monthly income to their overlord in exchange for protection. Tributaries do not use the diplomatic slot, so that's good to know, um, but cannot be integrated diplomatically and may cancel the relationship. Tributaries are not automatically called to their overlord's wars, meaning that if we have a tribute, uh, sorry, a tributary, then they can't be integrated into our realm like feudatories can. And they can even cancel their uh, tributary status whenever they want. Feudatories, which are basically puppets, cannot. But tribal vassal status. A tribal vassal is a tribal sub subject of a civilized nation who gives a portion of their monthly manpower income to their overlord in exchange for protection and bonuses to, to civilization. Tribal vas vassals do not use a diplomatic slot, but cannot be integrated dip diplomatically and may cancel the relationship. Tribal vassals are not automatically called to their overlord's wars. The overlord also receives a bonus tribal population happiness. So again, a tribal vassal cannot be integrated. So feudatories are what you want if you simply like if you want something more than just uh, a close ally, for example. But okay, let's move on a bit. Um, we have more imports. You choose iron. Wait, this is not wood. Yeah, this, I guess this is wood. <laughs> um, what do we want? I guess we want Rome to grow. And where's that status thing now? Um, is it here? F monthly food income. The monthly food income in Roma is 1239. So as, as long as this is positive, it will grow. And here, I guess... No, this is civilization value. Civilization value. Here, here, here we go. Province food. Food is at 250 out of a maximum of 100 and... Uh, sorry, 1100 food capacity. It changes by zero each month due to this thing. Shouldn't it actually change by... Something though, maybe that changes later. Um, the population of this province consumes 660 food every 12 months. Okay, that's a lot. So is it going down actually? Um, either way, I think we need grain. Uh, we do have grain. Maybe we, maybe we should try some other food. Um, oh yes, honey. I love honey. Ah, okay. So only Thrace. Um, only Thrace has honey at this moment here, but they do not wish to um, trade with us, sadly. Uh, but fish, let's see, fish, national freeman happiness, that's good. Let's see, a lot of people can trade uh, fish with us. Carthage has a lot of fish, but since we kind of want to do some fighting with them later on, I don't know if we want to rely on them a lot. Since, remember that uh, conducting trade with a foreign nation also gives them a bonus. But, <laughs> I just noticed that everybody else but Carthage, uh, nobody wants to trade with us. However, we can try to change that by changing our diplomatic stance here. Because if we, yeah, like we can spend political power or political influence changing stance. Um, but what we can do is change to a mercantile stance, for example. A mercantile stance 
um, means that all efforts are focused on making new trade deals as well as increasing the profitability of existing ones. Uh, so that gives us much more commerce income, 25% more. Uh, the opinion of others with mercantile stance, plus 30. And the opinion of others within diplomatic range, plus 20. And if you also remember that this stance, which we have now, uh, lessens our uh, opinion uh, with others. This is actually amplified because not only are the debuffs removed, but we're adding um, a positive. So if we change the mercantile stance, now we can go back and check uh, this trade stuff. But so we wanted uh, fish, for example. Now we can also trade fish with Venetia. So now we, we're going to get more food great let's see here now it's at 16 because we got fish i love uh, the uh, overview here and i think it's a lot better than it was definitely i have to give uh, kudos to the um developers here um i i honestly think this ui is uh, is beautiful now it's gotten such a facelift uh fish um, but now, remember, we, we only have one fish, so uh, we do <laughs> one fish, <laughs> fish resource. Uh, we do not have a surplus in the capital yet. So what we want to do, I guess we can rely on Carthage for this one fish, and maybe um, it can go better with some others later. Brutium is only minus seven, uh, but that's because they will lose their capital bonus. But let's trade with the Carthage for now. I assume we won't be going to war with them right away. Either way. Uh, from uh, Sardina Australis, I guess. That's close. I don't know if it matters, but... There we go. Our entire country gets the following benefits. National human happiness plus 8%. And that's great. Um, it's a free man. The free man pops in Roma ha have an average happiness of 85.90%. That's great. This is above their base happiness. If a pop falls below 50% happiness, they will start get generating unrest, which is something you really do not want. So again, we can uh, do three more. Vegetables, that's another food. Uh, move slaves cost. That's really good if you want to uh, move slaves around. Um, precious metals, what does that do? National citizen happiness. That's really good for, for research, and it makes a lot of money. Um, let's see, wine... We, ha we already have a surplus of wine. Um, leather. Base metals. That's local freeman happiness. Plus light infantry offense. That sounds really good. Stone building cost. Minus 10%. You know what? Stone uh, and uh, making buildings. In my opinion is very important. I think we shall trade some stone. We can uh, trade it from uh, the Alps. And um, we can have some more stone from somewhere else. Moesia. Where's this? Over here. And please say that if I go back, it goes back to the trade screen. No, it doesn't. So that so that uh, kind of sucks. Because then you have to open everything again. But either way, let's do this. Now we have a surplus of stone as well. Uh, so that whenever we want to build something, uh, our buildings will cost 10% less. Now we have one more, more resource we can get. Local citizen happiness from precious metals. Uh, I think I'll go for that. Elephants. You know what? If you actually... Um, <laughs> if you import elephants, you can uh, make war elephants. Um, and that's kind of kind of the same thing with horses and stuff too. Guess we only have one horse. Uh, so if we want to make some horses... What was the... Um, what was the thing here again with horses? Horses did what? Heavy calorie discipline. Why not? Livestock, though. Do we have that at all? No. Livestock. Pop promotion speed. Pop promotion is basically when uh, uh, free men are turned into citizens. And I guess sometimes citizens are turned into nobles. Or are they ever? Maybe not, actually. Maybe it's just between these. And also, sometimes slaves can become uh, free men. But for now, I think we'll do horses since that will give us... Or actually, wood. Chip recruit speed. Why not? Uh, can we get wood? Yes. From Pannonia. Dalmatia, maybe. There we go. 
Rome or the province of Latium has all of the um, resources that it can import at the moment based on our trading permits and uh, from the number of uh, citizens here or pops. But we can also do the same in the province of Campania. Actually, we cannot because it's only zero. Uh, that's, and, th and that's something to really keep in mind because um, you probably will get trade uh, import uh, licenses or, or you know uh, capabilities um, later on uh, as uh, citizens or cities grow and as you can also implement um, what's it called how do we do this thing here we go yes so as you can see here we have one uh, free province investment and we got that from our technology thing uh, before so we can if we want to fortify uh, the province giving it more uh, loyalty and infrastructure capacity we can have more population capacity import routes after six months after six months yeah or local building slots all of these are super important and uh, just important to, to spend well for example now if, if I use that here in Rome with the trade, um, we can all of a sudden get a surplus of horses since we would have another uh, trade route option. Um, a question is if we want to use it in Rome if we or if we could have, for example, more population capacity since Rome is actually quite soon at its capacity. Although I love, I love uh, building slots. Rome has only 10 building slots in total right now. Um, how does that change again? I guess I guess we'll learn that later on. Um, but having grain, one grain. Why is this grayed out? Is it grayed out? Yeah, it is. Promise of Campania. Is that because it's not it's not in surplus? That might be it actually. Mm, but it doesn't really matter here since it's not in the capital province, right? But, loyalty, where do, where do we see that again, province loyalty, impact on province loyalty, no unrest, plus 10, gives a total of plus 0, 10, uh, okay, I guess it's fine, there is a, um, also basically based upon the governor's loyalty as well, he has 43 loyalty, I always hated this guy, or like, I always find, found that, that the start of the Roman uh, campaign is quite... Um, I'm sure it's super easy for the <laughs> the veterans here, uh, especially compared to something like the Seleucid Empire or Antigone Kingdom, but... Uh, Rome has so many um, unloyal uh, generals that it's insane, um, in my experience. But we can mitigate that with the National Overview Panel. Uh, here we have something called Ideas, and uh, every nation um, has certain uh, bonuses based on which ideas that are up here. So Rome, for example, gets these bonuses, uh, plus 5 to loyalty of characters, and plus 8% to national freeman happiness if their ideas match the, the idea up here. So if we, for example, and also remember that this, this costs uh, political influence, if Rome chooses um, martial ethos, moral of armies plus 5%, I think that's good to have. If we choose an oratory idea, which is loyalty of generals plus 10, uh, you know what, it's just so important with uh, loyalty. Uh, although improve opinion maximum is really great if you want to do uh, international diplomacy and such, so I'm kind of tempted to do that one. But I don't want to lose right away to disloyal people. So maybe we will do the military administration, where we're a very militarized uh, nation here in Rome. And, oh, but I do love civic ideas so much, like bill cost minus 15%, national commerce income plus 20%, uh, national slave uh, output by 20%. So these are amazing peacetime um, ideas, actually. Uh, so you should, you know, try to be very flexible with these. But I do want the loyalty bonus right now since I'm kind of scared of what will happen. I don't want this uh, campaign to fail right away. Um, but order retreat will cost uh, 20, let's see, reinforcement speed plus 10%, army morale recovery plus 5%, which is important. We are going to do a lot of um, a lot of land fighting. But I do think that's a good choice. So now 
our loyalty is up. Let's check back at the governor. He has a 58 uh, loyalty right now, up from 40 uh, something before. So, so that's really good. And I think this episode is getting uh, quite uh, long right now. I know nothing seems to have happened, but we went over quite a few things. Um, we have yet to tar talk about a lot of things. Um, so yeah, so please uh, join me in the next one as well. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any comments or suggestions, then please make them. I am in need of help here. Uh, if you have any tips on where to go, what to do uh, to, re to remain safe from uh, disloyal characters. Where are the characters? Here they are. There's, there's a ton of them. Uh, there's also a whole governance system. If you have any tips on any of these, then please help me. Because uh, I want this campaign to go well, and I really want to learn and uh, get into this uh, game again which seems, seems a lot more beautiful and just a lot more fleshed out than before so if you enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe to the channel it would mean a lot and i, I hope to see you next time again uh so cheers friends bye